This is the Aptitude Outdoors podcast where we interview travelers, explorers, and outdoorsmen and women to bring you the best tips and stories from around the world. I don't know about you, but I always carry a knife. It doesn't matter what the situation is, I'm always reaching for a blade. Whether I'm out hunting in the backwoods, fishing on lakes and rivers, or simply cutting rope at camp, and when I need a tool, I want something that's quality, durable, and handmade right here in the USA. I know that's something you're looking for as well, so go to MaloneKnives.com and get yourself something that's going to last and look damn good too. Um, so I'm giving you a presentation today about how to explore anywhere, but I focused it solely on Northwest Ohio because that's where we all live. And I grew up under the premise that there's nothing to do here, wanted to get out of here, which I'll talk about here in a second. So a little background on me, uh, I through hiked the Appalachian Trail. My wife and I through hiked it in 2015. Awesome experience, loved it. I've given many presentations on that, so I won't bore you with the very long and drawn out details of a six month hike. It was difficult, but before that, a lot of people think, oh, this is where this dude got this sense of adventure. Not the case at all. Before I ever stepped foot into the outdoors, whoops, I was here, 17 years old, driving around in a beat up old Dodge Ram van around the country, playing music, that's Mount Rainier in the background. Uh, this is one of my favorite pictures just because it reminds me of that period of my life. Leaving Ohio, seeing what's out there. There's a lot to see out here. Hardly left the United States. There's so much to do right here in this country. I don't think I'll be able to see it all before I die. But this was the real first experience I ever had in exploring the outdoors. I wasn't there to explore the outdoors. I was there to play music, but you have a lot of free time in a touring band. There's not much going on. So you get to stop at places like this. I grew up in the outdoors. Uh, we grew up in Michigan doing lots of things outside, but this kind of awakened my passion. And since it was in the title, I had to talk about this Bigfoot documentary. Anytime I do anything, that's what people want to talk about is Bigfoot. So I'll just get it out of the way first. We can talk about it at the end if you have any questions. Uh, I went down to Arkansas this year for do some film work for a friend. Ended up at the Falk Monster Festival in Boggy Creek, Arkansas. Was really wild, very interesting people. Just happened to have this very famous Bigfoot guy was there who happened to be friends. So I did an interview with him, put him on the cover, and there's like 50,000 people watch this in like a month. So that was pretty cool. I had a lot of fun. I got to do some Bigfooting down south. Pretty strange time. We'll leave that there for now. <laughs> um, so oh, there we are. That, as Craig also stated, I run the Aptitude Outdoors podcast. And that is something I created right here. My studio is just across the bridge on the other side uh, of that terrible bridge where you have to wait 45 minutes to get across anymore because of whatever they're doing over there. But this is a, pon a, a podcast that I created after through hiking. It is about conservation, uh, working with people like Craig and Bill and a lot of other outdoors organizations over the years. I've kind of changed and learned that conservation in the end of the day is the most important thing. So that's what I put all my time and focus into lately. And you can learn more about that at the end as well. But let's get into what we're all here to talk about. Adventure, exploring, finding stuff to do, not complaining about being bored in Northwest Ohio. I've made a somewhat career out of this. And the first thing that I always tell people about any sort of adventure is it's not supposed to be fun all the time. It's likely not fun most of the time. Uh, I can think of many scenarios this year where I went out to do stuff I've never done before and it was not fun at all. It was pretty brutal, pretty tiring, but when you look back on those adventures, that's usually the funnest part. The struggle, the waking up early, I don't know how many of you have gone out and backpacked or kayaked, you go to a new place, you get out of your car and you go, what am I doing? I have no idea where I'm at. That's the fun. The figuring it out, getting lost, figuring out, learning how to read a map on the fly, those are all things that you should get out of the way before you go anywhere. Simple enough. Um, so this next slide, this was what I searched for Wood County Park District. These are all the parks in Wood County Park District. I don't, a couple of Metro Parks parks popped up in there. Has every, anybody here been to every single one of these parks? 
besides the people who work here. <laughs> I figured probably not. So this is literally a half of all the park districts in the area. So there's Toledo Metro Parks, there's state wildlife areas, there's game preserves, there's you name it, we have a ton of recreational outdoors places here in Northwest Ohio. So before you can ever say you're bored, go to all of these, go to all the parks, check them out. That is the start. Anytime I go anywhere, I had to travel for work not long ago. Uh, we were just outside of Cleveland. I packed a fishing rod in my backpack because when you do videography, it can also be very boring and not a lot going on. Staying in a hotel, the Scioto River was right down the road, popped over there for a few hours, went fishing. It's as simple as that sometimes. It doesn't always have to be a big grand adventure. It could be afternoon out anywhere you haven't been before. And that's kind of what I like to do. So this is just a list. I'm gonna read this off just for Bill and Craig here. It's a list of every single park that you can go to in Wood County. There's Adam Phillips Pond, Arrowhead Archery Range, Baldwin Woods, Beaver Creek, Black Swamp, Bradner, Carter Historic Farm, Cedar Creek, Cricket Frog Cove, Otsego, J.C. Ruthinger Memorial, Rudolph Bike Park, Rudolph Savannah, Sawyer Quarry, Slippery Elm, WW Knight, which you've all been to because you are here now, William Henry Harrison, Wood County Museum. Tons of stuff to do. That would take two months to go to all these places, easily. So keep that in mind before you say there's nothing to do here. Tons of places. So I'm going to ramp up the intensity of activities here. All activities that I regularly do in Northwest Ohio. I'm not talking about driving four hours to Michigan or Southern Ohio. I'm talking about things that I regularly do. You can ask my wife, she's not here right now. I'm always doing something. <laughs> so the easiest by far thing you can do here in Northwest Ohio is go hiking. It costs zero dollars, you need a pair of shoes, preferably a water bottle, map and compass. You can go to any park in the area, hike. Um, just for instance, Oak Openings, you could hike there for a month and not hit all the trails. There's so many trails to hit. Um, anywhere around, we have the, the biggest density of parks in Anywhere I've ever been, there's so many places to check out, and I've been to some of these parks at least 100 times, not exaggerating, and there's, it's just something different every time, every season, there's just a lot to do. So hiking, I'm sure all of you hike, if you're here, you probably hike a little bit here and there. Um, secondly, camping, places to camp all over here, up and down the Maumee River since they made it a water trail, there's so many places to camp. Uh, I don't, you guys don't have camping as of yet. You're working on getting camping. Metro Parks has some camping. There's campgrounds on Kelly, or yeah, Kelly's Island. There's campgrounds on all the Lake Erie Islands. There's so many places around here to camp, which just works anywhere you go as a base. You can extend your stay multiple days, explore an area for a longer period of time, even somewhere as close as Pickney State Park right over the border in Ann Arbor. You could camp there and hike around for a week and still not get bored. But camping does require a little bit of gear. You have to have a tent, you have to have something to sleep on, you have to have a sleeping bag. But those are all things that are relatively affordable and easy to get a hold of. They sell them at Walmart. You get fully equipped at Walmart. There's a Bass Pro there, there, somewhere, somewhere over here. Um, personally, one of my favorite things to do around here mountain biking, Wood County Parks, just built the Rudolph Bike Park. Great place to get your skills before you head out onto a mountain bike trail, which I've never done. I went in head first and uh, people have this notion that mountain biking is difficult and it can be. You can launch yourself off a jump as high as this roof and do all that cool stuff. I personally do not. I mostly just uh, try not to die when I'm out there. That is my fun. But there is a lot of opportunity to mountain bike around here. Oak Openings has the mountain bike trail. We've got the Wood County Parks has the Rudolph Bike Park. Just over the border of Michigan, there's Munson Park, Heritage Park, tons of stuff all over Michigan and Ohio to mountain bike. And it's a little expensive. You can get a cheaper bike. You'll probably regret it. So if you're gonna get into biking, probably good to start off on a good foot. Now, before we dive into the rest of these activities, they get a little more intensive and this, as any naturalist will tell you is the most important skill you can have in the outdoors. Land navigation, it's not as complicated as it sounds. I always feel like if I could figure out how to do it, you guys could figure out how to do it because it's not that difficult. Um, I learned how to land navigate, believe it or not, after the Appalachian Trail, 
You'd think that would be a vital skill to have before you went out there. Did not have that. Luckily, it's very well marked and easy to find. But I know Wood County Parks does have programs, land navigation. I've taken them with Bill here before. And it's a good base level to learn just how to simply read a map, to have a map with you. Because you can carry a map with you, carry a compass with you. But if you don't know what anything means, it's really not going to help you out in the end of the day. So taking a land navigation course for you, any of the rest of this stuff is pretty useful, and it's not that complicated. You probably, what, in one or two courses, you probably have a basic, good basic understanding. And what I like to say about the good thing about Northwest Ohio is it's safe. You can't get lost here, really. Like, you can go to Mommy State Forest with a map and compass, and if you feel lost, you can go a cardinal direction, you'll hit a road in like three minutes. There's, there's nowhere to get lost. So it's really, I can't stress it enough, before you do a lot of more intensive outdoor activity, land navigation is key. Um, backpacking. I looked up a list of top rated backpacking sites in Ohio. Oak Openings Metro Park is rated one of the top five backpacking sites in Ohio, believe it or not. So you can backpack right here without ever leaving this general area. Um, something that I should do if I'm looking to go out for a while and I don't want to leave town is I'll string different areas together, string different parks together. There's unlimited options because there's so many parks that are close around here. Um, you do need a little bit more equipment when you're backpacking. So as we ramp up these activities, you're going to get more intensive equipment needs, but that doesn't mean it has to be expensive. Uh, that's a misnomer. I do all of these and I don't buy expensive gear because I would not have any money left. So um, we, the, the state of Ohio has the Buckeye Trail. That's 1,400 miles of backpacking that you can do right here in Ohio. Um, that's huge. I mean, you can through hike Ohio and you can section hike it. There's many sections that you can string together. I know there's people out there who go for a week a year. They go for a weekend every month throughout the spring and fall. I mean, there's plenty of opportunity to backpack here. You got Wayne National Forest, Zaleski State Forest further down south. Plenty of backpacking options down there. And the good thing about starting here is that once you do this, you are equipped to go anywhere and do anything because you'll have a tent, you'll have a sleeping pad, you'll have a sleeping bag, you'll have everything you need to be able to explore anywhere on, on the outdoors. And that's anywhere in the US. It all translates very well. So that's why I encourage people to try backpacking because then you're set up for essentially forever. I still use the gear I had from the Appalachian Trail and that was a long time ago at this point. So you might recognize these two guys. That's Bill, that's Craig. Can anybody guess where this is first? You already know probably. Lake Erie Islands. Correct, Lake Erie Islands and kayaking is by and far one of my favorite activities here in Northwest Ohio. We have so much water. We have more water than I've ever seen. We go anywhere around the country, they have lots of streams, they have lots of lakes. We have the biggest lakes. We have some huge, relatively safe rivers with not a lot of fast moving, crazy current, depending on time of the year, uh, that you can kayak safely. Again, both Metro Parks offer programs that allow you to learn for free on or very inexpensively how to do this safely. That's where I learned how to kayak. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about intensive kayaking later. Um, this was from the Kayak Rendezvous, which I just got an email from today from Bill that he registered me. So thanks, Bill. Um, awesome. If you want to get into kayaking, it's a great community out there. You go over to Putin Bay for basically a long weekend, paddle around the islands, lots of experienced kayakers out there if you need help. And I'm sure anybody out there would be glad to help you. This was a great day, I love being out here. Uh, the first time I ever got seasick in a kayak. The waves were just so high, I was just like, did not expect that. But again, part of adventure, not always fun. But we have, you know, Kelly's Island, Putin Bay, the Maumee River, I love kayaking in the Maumee River. People are always freaked out about because there's dirt in the river. There's dirt everywhere. I, I've never had a problem kayaking in the river. Uh, Bill Craig and I just kayaked uh, William Henry Harrison Park down the, to the, down the portage. That was a great day. Saw tons of wildlife. Honestly, there's a lot going on. Beautiful river out there as well. Kayaking, again, kayak is not cheap, but you can use the park's equipment to go out and check out these rivers around here. Maumee River, highly underrated. I've been on a lot of rivers. Maumee River is very awesome. So don't underestimate how much fun you can have out there, especially 
or you're crossing Farnsworth Metro Park or Otsego Metro Park, kayaking through the islands and stuff, even running the rapids when they're a little bit you know, more stable and the water's not you know, this high, it can be a really good time. We run the rapids pretty much every year for fun. I was asked recently, what does the outdoors mean to you? To me, the outdoors is everything. It's like the growth model that consumes the entrepreneur or the unending drive that pushes the athlete to outperform the competition. It's the greatest teacher of life lessons, whether it be learning to accept that most things are out of your control or that the trees, the rivers, the mountains move along whether you're there or not. It's the motivator that keeps me accountable to my physical and mental health because if I don't have the strength and conditioning to do the things that I enjoy outdoors, whether they be hunting, fishing, backpacking, adventure racing, or tackling some long distance adventures, then everything becomes exponentially more difficult. Most importantly, the outdoors allows me to be, to think, to exist in the same plane that the majority of the natural world still exists in, to break the bonds from what we call civilization. The outdoors is freedom, a place where life and death are one and the same, the prime example of what it means to exist. In my mind, there is no separation. The outdoors simply is, as all things should be, perfection in its most chaotic form. The outdoors is you, it's me, it's all of us. Just observing wildlife costs zero dollars, like hiking. Uh, we have, don't know how many of you are aware, but the biggest week in American birding is one of the biggest events in the world for bird migration here in Northwest Ohio. You go out to the marshes, you go out to McGee Marsh, you go out to Metzger's Marsh, you go even to Oak Openings. All the parks around here, these birds are using Maumee River, they're using the everything, like the Great Lakes is a flyway. Some insanely rare species come through here every single year. Ducks, birds, you couldn't learn all the names of these birds in a lifetime, I guarantee it. Uh, so it's really a fun activity to do. We have year round we have birds, like at Oak Openings, I could walk you to a spot right now where you could see red-headed woodpeckers, pileated woodpeckers, there's deer, there's just so much stuff that you can do. Uh, my good friend Seth back here, amazing wildlife photographer, you should follow him on Instagram. Um, but yeah, like just learning about this region in general really opens your eyes. You go to Oak Openings, ecologically rare globally, not just here, nor not just the United States, not just the Midwest, like it's a globally rare ecosystem right down the road. Like it is, I've argued with people about this all the time on the podcast. They're like, you're wrong. I was like, I'm not wrong. Like, ask any biologist at University of Toledo. This is a very, very rare ecosystem. I mean, there's cactus in oak openings. It's insane. It's just so cool to be out there and check that stuff out. So another thing, never underestimate it. Wild turkey, fox, all these animals live here. Otter, everything. It's all here. Wildlife photography, probably top two of my favorite things to do. We'll get into top one later. It's coming. Uh, definitely not the cheapest activity. Wildlife photography can be prohibitively expensive or it can be affordable. My first camera I ever bought was Nikon D5600. It cost me $350. You can get a zoom lens for it. And honestly, it makes you a better photographer when you have crappier equipment because you have to be good. You have to be quiet, you have to be able to approach wildlife, you have to be able to get closer. You don't have to get that close when you have a giant 600 millimeter lens and you could be a quarter mile away and still get a good picture. So when spring rolls around, birds start rolling in here, you'll catch me, Seth, out at the marshes taking photos all the time. This was in Arkansas. Um, I don't have a lot of pictures of me taking pictures because that's not really, doesn't, it's really weird, but uh, those ducks down there, I was shooting that Bigfoot documentary and those ducks were down there. I had to get some pictures of them. They're called, the guy called the Mexican Whistlers. They're really cool looking ducks. I don't think we get them up here, but they're very common down there. Um, and you know, the wildlife photography, great community, very knowledgeable people. 
They just know a lot about animals. So I, I really enjoy wildlife photography, highly recommend it. Whoops, another highly <laughs> underrated thing we have around here for free is archery. Uh, Wood County Parks has an archery park, Arrowwood Park. Um, Toledo Metro Parks has West Winds Metro Park, totally free, run programs, teach you how to do archery. I didn't really think I'd like archery, but I actually really love archery now. I put targets in my yard and I shoot all the time. It's kind of like meditation. Uh, it just really takes your mind off of stuff because it takes so much focus and attention. And it's just fun. It's a, a good thing to take kids to do. It's a great it's a great program for kids. It can be a little scary sometimes. I've run programs at Metro Parks with kids shooting arrows. It can be a little hectic. But it just teaches you kind of like patience, resilience, focusing on the target. It's very hard. So um, don't underestimate how fun this can be. And then again, these guys do it for free. So you should definitely take advantage of those programs because archery can be expensive. I mean, a bow is not a cheap piece of equipment. But again, it doesn't have to be prohibitively expensive. Craigslist, Facebook, that's where I get a lot of my stuff. Love archery around here. Uh, fishing, getting into more consumptive activities. Walleye capital of the world. I had a guy argue with me about this on my podcast, and I was like, this is not a debate. We had the wall that river right there, the Maumee River, where we're standing, massive numbers of walleye run up here every year. And it is... I'm not a huge fan of the wall I run because of the crowdedness of it. When I do my nature, I like to be away and in like as much solitude as possible. But recently, last year, I went on a huge fishing binge. Uh, I spent a lot of time looking at maps, trying to find public access fishing around here. Um, there's tons of it. I mean, we obviously there's the lake. Uh, there's Metzger's Marsh has a gigantic pier where you can just walk out and fish. There's a big, uh, I don't know what they call it, like a break where it keeps the marsh separate from Lake Erie. Great fishing out there. This was five minutes from my house, uh, Delta Reservoir. There's just so many places to fish around here. The Maumee River, obviously. Um, fishing is super cheap to get into. I, I would say the majority of all of my fishing equipment comes from Walmart and it's like, $35 fishing poles, because I like to get into things. I watched a man once drop a $150 fishing pole in the Maumee River, and he was like, yeah, that really hurt. And I'm like, well, I dropped mine, and it was $20, so I don't feel too bad. So keep that in mind if you're getting into fishing. It can be really fun. I know the first time people catch fish, they're like, I don't want to touch it. But they're fun. You just throw them back if you don't, if you don't eat them. Um, and I do, you do have to be conscious. Like uh, The river does sometimes have some things where you shouldn't eat them at certain times of year. So keep that in mind. We're going to get into my favorite outdoor activity, the king of all outdoor activities that everyone is terrified of, ice fishing. Um, obviously, Lake Erie is a little more dangerous. Uh, this is actually in a lake up in Michigan. That's Seth right there. Uh, we, were, we were out there. That was like the first time I ever went ice fishing, probably about two years ago. And or was that last year? I don't remember. But it was... I don't know, it's something different than normal fishing. It's so peaceful. There's hardly ever anybody out there. And it's weird, when you're in a boat fishing, the water's moving, you can't really see under the water unless it's insanely clear, not a lot of movement. When you're out there on the ice, it's like looking into this fish tank. It is wild. You can see everything under you, you can see all the vegetation. Um, obviously with Safety wise, you have to be very conscious of what you're doing when you go out on the ice. Um, they make safety equipment. They make, you know, basically big, heavy snow suits that you wear out there. They have ice picks that you wear around your neck if you were to fall in. Um, when I was out here, the ice was two foot thick, so I wasn't overly concerned about going out there. But if you have an opportunity to try this, I would really give it a shot. And the, the fun thing about it is the fishing poles are about 32 inches long. And because you're sitting in that little tiny shack, there's not a lot of room in there. So you can catch a bluegill that's about as big as your hand and it feels like you're fighting a whale. It is one of the funnest activities. You're in there with a little heater. You're, I could sit in an in a ice shanty like this. And I'm not joking. It was negative like 15 when we were doing this and I was just completely fine in a sweatshirt, have a little heater in there. It's an awesome time. So definitely be careful if you're doing ice fishing and it's really not that expensive to get into. 
uh, if you don't get the shanty, obviously, those can be a little pricey, but a fishing pole, I found them for $17 at Bass Pro. You need something to bust a hole in the ice. I used an old ax I had laying in the ground. You sit on a bucket and you have at it. It's a great time. Uh, this next thing is not the most popular of activities for some people, but we do have some of the best marshes ever in the world here for hunting. The Lake Erie Marshes, we have one of the oldest duck hunting clubs in America here on the Lake Erie Marshes. It's private, invite only. I tried to get in, they wouldn't let me in. I'm not, I'm not good enough. But it's, it's really insane to me like how much opportunity there is around here, specifically a lot of people, you know, you watch TV shows, they're traveling all over the world, all over the country. Like I do all of this right here. This was taken two week, three weeks ago at McGee Marsh. Um, and the thing that I like as someone who's very, very motivated by conservation uh, issues, they have a very limited draw of people that can come in here. They have these permanently built duck blinds. You're only allowed three people in one. You have to permit that day of. Once the permits are gone, it's not a free for all, you're out there. It's great. So, you know, there is a lot of opportunity. If you do get into the more consumptive activities like hunting and fishing, you're, you will never be home. There's so much to do year round. I, I can't not, I'm always doing something outside and I love it. Um, so it, like even some of the parks around here, Wood County, I know they have Baldwin Woods and Cricket Frog Cove. I don't want to give away my hunting spots, but you do have access. I like sharing information with people. You can do it. Metro Parks has a lottery system that you can get in to hunt. There's lots of options around here. Mommy State Forest. And then this is where it all comes together. This is why I'm never home. Combining all this stuff together. It is limitless what you can do around here if you have it. So this is from the Fort Support paddle that I did. There's Bill right there in the back. That's my wife, and that's Amanda Demalski. She is at Metro Park Toledo. Runs a lot of their outdoors programs. After the Appalachian Trail, I have all this backpacking equipment. I'm back here in Northwest Ohio. I'm looking around. I'm like, what can I do that's similar here? And I read about Fort to Port from old newspaper articles because I was like, has anybody ever paddled the whole Maumee River? Because it's only 137 miles. It's not super long. It's a big, lazy, flowing river. So I found, found some article where two guys did it, I don't know, like a decade ago, I would think. It was, it was quite a while ago. So Bill's used to getting weird phone calls from me like, we should go do this. Um, but Bill, he's you know awesome kayaker. We, he, we, we planned it. We went map to map to map. We did all the safety training. We learned how to flip. We went to the pond when it was freezing because when we were doing this, it was spring, it was cold. We went through all the proper safety training, which you know I believe you guys do offer similar stuff like that. And we just went for it. Uh, the river was flooded. The dams looked terrifying. So we really had to like play cautiously when we were approaching dams and that's again where land navigation comes in. Um, these, even my little kayak, I do not have a kayak that is suited well for kayaking long distance. I learned that very quickly, but all of my backpacking gear, since it was for essentially sitting in a small pack, fit in this little compartment in the back of my kayak. And we were self-sufficient for four days down the Maumee River. Uh, we averaged over 30 miles a day of kayaking because this was right after they did the Maumee River water trail. They made all these public access points. They made the map. I'm hoping that it's getting better over time, but I still would bet that not many people are doing this. So don't rule this out as an option. You can definitely kayak the whole river. It's totally doable. You can do it over a week. You can do it over a month. You can do it over two years. And it's beautiful. I think some of the western reaches of the Maumee River, you can put up against any wildlife area you've been in the country, except for Fort Wayne, it was real dirty in there, so. But, you know, that's Indiana for you, I guess. Uh, kayak fishing, this is something that I really, again, last summer I went really hard, well, this past summer. Uh, this was at Blue Creek Metro Park. One of the funniest things ever is going out there and seeing all the people fishing off the bank and you're out in the middle and they're like, I never catch fish here, how did you catch that? Well, I have a kayak, so I can go out, I can go test out the waters. Um, there's big fish in there. Everybody always said there's nothing in there. And I, I 
I'm just a curious person. I must know for myself. There are fish in there, I promise you. Um, and the thing that I like about kayak fishing is you can take any kayak, throw a fish finder on it and something to hold your fishing pole, you're good to go. It doesn't have to be these guys out there with you know $30,000 kayaks with motors on them and stuff. Like I paid $100 for my fish finder and I'm good to go. So really fun activity just to go out on, on some of these waters that you wouldn't normally go on. Even like ponds at some of the parks, there's some of the smaller lakes, there's the rivers awesome to just see what's out there. There's, I can't remember how many species of fish the Maumee River has in it, but it's like a lot. There's a ton of fish species in there. I haven't caught many of them, unfortunately. Uh, so backpacking and fishing is also something that I really like to do. This was on the Manistee River, but you could easily do this anywhere around here. Get a fly rod, get a collapsible fishing pole, throw it in your pack. You can go out for days, you can try different areas, you can hike around, you can stay here, you can stay there, move around. Great option for, and these poles are super light. I mean, you can get a collapsible fishing pole that weighs practically nothing. I know backpackers like to argue about weight and things of that nature, but whatever. Uh, a new passion that I really love, this was the Michigan Adventure Race. I'm trying to talk these guys into doing an adventure race here, putting you on the spot. So if you hear, uh, if you guys would like to do an adventure race, please email Bill and Craig immediately and incessantly. Uh, this combines everything. This is like a very difficult thing, but it's very fun. Uh, this was from this year, just a few months ago, um, and it combines. Land navigation is the key to it. If you can't land navigate, you're not gonna win because it's hard to find some of the stuff. You're actually in the woods. It'd be just like heading out into that woods right there without any trails or anything. You're just in the woods. So it combines mountain biking, it combines paddling, it combines trail running. Uh, we did, I think we did a six hour race. It was a long day. Um, but the land navigation part, that's the part that really separated it. We actually did end up winning the first place in the three-man division. So, and that was simply because we all studied our land navigation. There was a lot of people who were much faster than us and like, like ultra trail runners and we were like, we're gonna get our butts kicked. But they didn't know how to read a map. So we literally won by being smarter than them, which felt good. Uh, we did not expect that at all. So it was fun. And this is just a fun sport. You don't have to be a super athlete to go do it. There's plenty of people that just go out and do it for fun. It's a good day up in Michigan. It's not technically Northwest Ohio, but we're working on it, okay? And then, you know, this is a group of guys that are a conservation uh, organization up in Michigan. This is the first time I've ever been to a hunting camp. Never been to this. Uh, I know some people have reservations about hunting, but watching people with well-trained dogs, like teaching them and how obedient these dogs are, taking them through the woods, these dogs, I was like, why are they shaking? He's like, they're so excited to get out and go do this. Like, this is what dogs do. Um, it was a great experience, a lot of camaraderie. Like, one of the things that I like about stuff like this is get like-minded people together, you learn, you get to learn about conservation, you get to learn about using natural resources, you get to get your own food, and you get to just meet awesome people. This is the board of directors from Michigan United Conservation Clubs and some of their workers. I just randomly got invited up there and it was a good time. So if you ever get the opportunity to do something like that out of your comfort zone, Believe it or not, before I threw hike the Appalachian Trail as a vegetarian, and here I am now. So it's just opening your mind up to like trying different stuff. Thing I always say about hunting is, if you don't like it, you don't have to do it again. It's just it's that simple, um, but it's great stuff. And then recently, this never occurred to me, uh, kayaking into the Maumee River and hunting ducks never would have occurred to me ever. So there's so like you can combine all of these things together. There's limitless options for you to be able to go out there and explore. You can just get in a kayak and go. You can get a backpack on your back, drop yourself off at a park, go. For many years, I kept a backpack with a water bottle and a emergency blanket and a jacket in it, and I would just drive off to somewhere, go there, and just walk around and see what was going on. Because you do get bored of hearing people say, there's nothing to do here. I'm like, there's literally so much to do here. Like, I'm always occupied. I've said that a million times. Um, before we're gonna start wrapping up, there's some resources that I wanted to leave you guys with that I didn't know about until essentially the last few years. Um, 
So we'll start here with the Maumee River Water Trail. We got Fort Wayne down here. Had to crop a bunch of this stuff out because it didn't fit on the weird slide sizes that they make you use in the program. So uh, this is the map we essentially used when we did the Fort to Port. It has every single bridge, landmarker, place where you can pull your boat out listed for the whole length of the Maumee River. Um, I know there's also a book, I don't know if it's still in production, where it was like all the boating access, like Lake Erie and the Maumee River thing like that they made a while ago. It was like a full-size book. Yeah, they still make it. They still make it, okay. That's a great resource if you're looking for places to go. And I have uh, so many of them if you want one. For free. Get one from him before you leave. They're awesome books. I don't have them. Don't get them today before you leave. Get them another time. But the, uh, this is the Portage River that recently became a designated water trail. Uh, we went out and kayaked that. It was awesome, it was very shallow, uh, but it felt like more of like a smaller stream. You felt more like closed in, you're down low, and then you're going through all these, you know, towns through, you got it's Woodville, uh, whatever else is out there. It was, it was a fun paddle, it was really nice, check it out. These are all maps you can find online for free, you just type in the name of the river, it's got a water trail map. Um, Lake Erie Islands, water trails, so, you obviously, you're down here in Marblehead, Port Clinton, whatever, and then you take the ferry over. That's what we do at the Kayak Rendezvous. Very fun time. We camp at Put-In Bay, uh, South Bass Island. I think it was like up here, wasn't it? Southern end. Here? Yeah. Okay, so we camped over here. Uh, mm -hmm. We, I mean, you can paddle around the islands, but we ended up paddling out to here, Green Island, that was an adventure, I will tell you, because that open water is a different thing. I was like, yeah, let's do it. It was very challenging. And then we kayaked from Green Island to Middle Bass Island. That was fun. And then there's just so much, I mean, we, we kayaked for like two days and we didn't see hardly half of the stuff out there. And the good thing about this is obviously weather dependent. It's relatively safe. I mean, you could pull off, you can, you know, start here where there's a boat launch, go into Putin Bay if you're feeling a little nervous or whatever, you get tired. You can bounce around, you can bounce from island to island. I really want to go out to Kelly's Island and try it. There's, it's a big island. The state park campground there is really cool. They have the glacial grooves. There's so much going on on the islands. That's like, if you haven't been to the islands and just checked out all of them, you have to do it because I mean, I've watched sunsets from Putin Bay or the, like the western edge of Kelly's Island. And you're like, I'm on the ocean. Like, how am I? This is like, it feels like I'm in southern Florida or you know, on the west coast. You know, it's just, it's, it's amazing. So don't underestimate how awesome the lake is. This is Maumee State Forest. Um, I started exploring Maumee State Forest within the last two years, and you can just go there and walk around. You, there's like so much land that's it's not a park you know as much as it is a state wildlife area some of these segments have trails there's horse trails there's hiking trails there's atv trails there's dirt bike trails and it looks on a map it's hard to tell it looks like just a big plot of land it looks like just woods you go out there uh i've walked around quite a bit there's big logging like trails they've cut in there so you can walk around these places with relative ease and just see them with the caveat being I would not go during gun season for deer because you might get shot <laughs> there's a lot of people out there but other like any other time of the year like barring like intensive hunting popular hunting times you just can go there and walk around there's a no facilities there's no anything there you can park on the side of the road and just go in there I've done it many times and there's so much cool stuff in there there's no trail markers, there's no nothing, you just walk around. And like I said, there's, you can come in, and if you get here and you're lost, you can literally just go in any direction. You're not gonna get lost. That's why it's a great place to do, learn how to do land navigation. Uh, McGee Marsh, this is where the prime birding stuff goes down when there's biggest week in birding. I love wood ducks. I took that picture this year, whoops. And you know, it's not a, well, it's a huge area, but the, the general part where you can walk around is way up there. Huge parking lot, but the birding trails are all through there. And this little yellow dots up here. Just a great place to check out. You see a lot of 
wildlife that you don't normally see around this area because just the marsh itself attracts different species. They have like coots and a lot of different ducks that you wouldn't normally see just floating in the river. Uh, highly awesome place to go check out. And the, I believe the Black Swamp Bird Observatory is located in here too. So they have good information about how to do that and get more involved. This is Metzger's Marsh. This is kind of what I was talking about earlier. Great for fishing. They got this giant pier. Uh, I have a good friend, he loves catfishing. We'll go out there because you're not getting catfish out of the muddy river. It's more of like the clean Lake Erie water. Uh, really fun, there's a big pier, and then there's this big break wall that runs all the way. It's kind of what that dotted line is that separates the marsh from the actual Lake Erie. That's just a great place to go walk around. You get to see the lake on, on one side, you have this beautiful marsh on the other side. There's, again, tons of crazy wildlife in there that I didn't know existed in Northwest Ohio. Below it, you've got Ottawa Wildlife, National Refuge. Up that, the eastern part of where we live is highly underexplored by a lot of people, but there's a lot to do out there. And then, you know, the most important thing is to find people that like to do the things that you're trying to do. That's the hardest part of going on an adventure of any sort is finding people who also like to do that or who know what equipment you'll need. Likely if someone's obsessed about a topic, they will have a lot of equipment that they'll just let you use. And that's why coming to stuff like this is very important. That's why getting involved in like hiking groups or backpacking groups or kayaking groups or conservation organizations, whatever you're into, get involved, just join. Like it costs, I join like Ducks Unlimited or something. It's like 35 bucks a year. And then you can have access to all their information. You go to their meetings, you meet people. I've met so many people just showing up to random events. And then we just go out and have fun all over, all over. I just, I, I can't stress that enough. Um, public programs are great places to meet people. If you go to a public program where they're teaching kayaking, there's other people there that want to learn how to kayak. Easy way to make friends who you can go kayaking together. So it's just stuff like that. Um, and you know, that's pretty much the end of my presentation. I hope you learned something about that. If you're interested in seeing what I do, I got a YouTube channel and all that fun stuff, podcast, that is one.